Hello and welcome along to another episode of this FM20 story, The Head Coach with me, Daniel. My annual series, which combines two of the most popular football manager saves, the classic journeyman story, combined with the director of Football Challenge. It's season one, episode three, and today we continue in our first job at Kettering. We've got a bottom of the table clash against Gloucester as we try to edge away from the relegation zone. We're one of four teams on 19 points in the bottom half, just creeping away from that bottom two. And if we can continue to pick up results along the way, hopefully we'll be out of trouble before long. If you have missed either of the first two episodes, then please do click on the eye above to catch up. Just to see how we got this job, meet all the players that we're currently managing, and of course see the first league game we had in charge, which was against Farsley Celtic in the last episode. A massive thanks to those of you that have watched those first two already, and if you are enjoying the series, please do put a thumbs up on the video. If you're new to the channel, then subscribe for daily FM20 content. We're on our new schedule now moving forward. Every day we'll be rotating our two long-term stories, so today we'll have the head coach, and then tomorrow it'll be our Dorking Wanderers save. But we start with bad news despite the few games we've had since the last episode and that's relating to our low knee Reese Kavanagh. We were very excited when our director of football got him in and rightly so he scored three in his first five games but unfortunately he then picked up an injury and he's going to be out for at least another month. It was two months in total he's missed the last few as well though we have managed to sneak a few results and as you can see at the top right the most famous one was Southport who at the time were at the top of the National League North table. So let's start with the transfer screen just so you can see what's been happening. And the simple answer is absolutely nothing. We've got no budget left and it's causing us big problems. We're being held back greatly and we aren't able to improve the squad. So let's start on that schedule screen so you can see the recent results. Of course, you were obviously with me last time for the Farsley game, our first match in charge of our career. And we followed that up with a winless run, five games in total actually. We drew one all at home to Brackley who are currently second bottom. A poor start but nimbly got us back into it and then a brilliant 3 all draw away to Halifax which got us a replay in the FA Cup. Halifax obviously in the National League so the division above the one we're in and the board were disappointed to lose in the replay which I think is a little bit unrealistic. We did score goals and Kavanagh got one again but unfortunately it wasn't quite enough and then our home to York and Kidderminster two of the top sides in the league. We took the lead in the first one against York but three late goals turned it around and again Marcus Kelly with the goal against Kidderminster but it wasn't enough to stop us being defeated. Defeated. Then into November, we had a chat with the lads, and my word have they responded in style. A 2-0 win away at Boston, Nimely and Kavanagh with the first half goals. Unfortunately, it's where Kavanagh got his injury though, so since then we've had to tweak our formation slightly. We've started with a 4-4-2, but if we've taken the lead, we've then adapted our tactic and gone to a midfield 5 if need be. At home to Southport, that was his most effective. A 3-1 victory against the league leaders at the time. Kelly, Pugh and Nimely with a goal each. A fantastic result for this club. Club, and it edged us ever closer to survival. We then lost 2-1 narrowly against Altrinum. We did lead on the hour mark through Nimely. We just couldn't compete though we ran out of steam and unfortunately Jordan Holm beat us with a brace. But we go into this one in decent form and bar Kavanagh we have got everyone available. Gloucester missing a couple of names themselves so I'm hoping we'll be able to get a result. A point would keep the distance to the bottom two but of course we'd like to win as many as possible. We've got a big spell of games coming up and I'm hoping we'll be able to do well but we with Kavanagh out injured and very few goal threats, of course that's going to be very difficult. So let's go and have a look at the dynamics just to see how they're improving. Everything's slightly in the green for now. And of course we are going to have a brief look at training as well. And mostly the individual tactics we've set up. So the main thing we've done, which you won't be able to see from this screen, if we change it to the list format, is we've set everyone to work on a positional duty, almost all of them working on a certain role. And then we've also given a few particular focuses. And the reason we've only done a few of them, we've focused on ones that are particularly need it. The main reason being that we haven't got enough coaches to cover all of them. And a couple of players like Brighton, we're just trying to make good enough to sell. So we're not going to set focuses for everyone, even though a few of them need them. We just want to make sure the key ones are being worked on so endurance for people like Nimely and Pew who haven't got the fitness to play twice a week and in defensive positioning for our right back we haven't got a good player in that position so we've got to try and make use of what we've got so that's a little bit of an insight to what we're doing in training we leave the overview and the general training to our assistant and we only intervene if we notice something in particular so if we can see two or three set pieces in a game we'll then go and work on defending set pieces but otherwise I trust my staff with it we've got a pretty decent team now thanks to our director of football 
and he has actually added one more since the last episode. Not a particularly influential one, but an under-18 manager in James Grogan. He's very good at working with youngsters, and he's got a fairly decent personality. So I'm hoping that he'll make a difference when we do get a youth intake later this year. But for now, we've got to focus on the league, and let's get into this big game against Gloucester. So if we have a look at the table, Gloucester's slight favourites at home, though to be fair, they haven't won in four games. And near the bottom there, we're both six points clear in that cluster of sides in the middle of the table. We've got to try and avoid a relegation battle this year and we need to pick up results in games like this if we want to do that pretty comfortably. So let's go and have a look at the lineup we've gone for. We've got a card happy referee which isn't great and in terms of our lineup there's probably only a couple of changes. O'Connor coming in for the injured Kavanagh up front and then the transfer list is store as displaced Vidal at right back. Both of them rated pretty poorly in truth. It's just the best of a bad bunch. It's the one position I'd love to improve. So we've not got much choice in terms of the squad. Only three players that don't make the 16 today. We've got Emmanuel Idem in goal as always. Probably one of the best players at the club on paper. Storer and Scars the fullback with Williams and Graham in the middle. Mikel and Kennedy are on the wings with Pugh and Kennedy in central midfield. And then Nimely joined by O'Connor up front, who's not really offered a lot since Kavanagh's injury. So let's get into it and see if we can nick a result. On the road, we've struggled often this season, but we did win that game against Boston recently. It's a narrow 4-4-2 for Glasgow. Gloucester. Playing the diamond is something we haven't faced yet. I can't imagine it's going to end well for us. We're definitely going to have to focus on the wing play. So let's get into the first half and see what happens. I can't imagine this ending well. It's McLean at centre half for Gloucester all the way back to the keeper. We'll take that at the start if they want to waste time. Nil-nil would be a good result for us. Gloucester need the win more than we do. Long ball forward and the highlight ends. And we're just under five gone. We're yet to see anything threatening. Well, quarter of the game gone and we're back for the first highlight. It's a Gloucester attack. Harper at the back stick from a long cross in. Finds Robert on the edge. A good diving header from Graham. Now Meikle can counter for us. We've got a three on two but we've got to take advantage. Meikle beats his man. There's one in the middle. He crosses for O'Connor. Oh it's over here but O'Connor doesn't care. What a fantastic finish that is. Off the crossbar to the roof of the net and it's one of those brilliant finishes. We lead 1-0 and it's a sucker punch on the counter. Our first shot on target and we've scored the goal. The fact that that's the first highlight we've seen when we've got extended highlights on shows just how poor the game's been. And we're attacking again, but the free kick's cleared. And now it's a chance to counter for Gloucester. Harper at left back going forward. We'll come back to that point in a moment. Harper inside to Robert, and he's trying to get the ball forward. Rooster in the middle with a long ball. Scars does well to head away at left back. Kennedy getting there for the second ball. And it's back to Williams, the centre half. He goes long over the top. Harper heads away as far as Avery. He finds Hanks in the middle to Robert. Time to pay it back to Rooster. The extra man in midfield really showing. Jackson into the box. It's deflected for a corner. Liam Williams getting a crucial touch. And we survive the Gloucester attack. But of course it's not over. They've still got the chance to deliver. The set piece in from Hanks. It's to the back post to McLean with a free header. But thankfully for us it's wide of the post. My point was that our other series with Dorkin Wanderers. We're only using key highlights in that one. And we're seeing so many more chances than this save. Which shows just how boring a side we are. Or maybe how good our Dorkin team is. As Gloucester put a long shot over for the bar and we tend to the break we lead 1-0 been a really good first half performance he's in with a ball out to the left to Kelly loses out in the aerial battle but Scars with a brilliant volley forward O'Connor's in one on one good save Gcock the clear cut chances are broken unfortunately the issue still wasn't fixed and as a result it's gone behind for a corner Kelly into the back post to Nimely loses out in the air and it's cleared but Kennedy brings it down for Williams plenty of time 30 yards out out to Kelly who delivers early no one in the box there and it just trickles out for a goal kick harmlessly wide with 10 to half time we're back for another free kick. The game seems to be hotting up now. Williams switches it to the right wing for Meikle. Loses possession, but it's only cleared as far as Williams again. And now the two left-sided players are keeping possession. Scar switches the ball out to the right. Meikle's got an overlap, but he tries to do a back heel. And that's going to put us in a world of trouble. But the clearance up has no one there. Why are Gloucester strikers so deep? Graham has time to just bring it down. And it's out to the right back, Stora. He goes long to Kelly on the left. There's two or three in the box if he can find them. Goes through to Meikle as everyone misses. The floodlight's not well positioned here. We're not enjoying the Gloucester ground there. They've not made it very handy for us to see. They've got a lovely floodlight in the way of the pitch, but we're still continuing our pressure. The highlight ends, it remains 1-0, and with 5 to the break, we'll certainly take it. 
Three minutes to half time. It's a G-cock free kick up to Rusa in the holding role. An extra man in the middle is taking advantage. But even so, we've had more possession in this game. I don't remember many where we can say that. Certainly an interesting start for us. It's Jackson 25 yards out of Parker. Back to Hanks who shoots. Idem's led it through his fingers. It's a wonderful strike. We all know about the long shots on this game. And Joe Hanks just scoring yet another one. One all and it's going to be level at half time. Certainly not the best time for us to concede. There it is then, all square at the break. We've arguably just about been the better side. Probably not done a left to lead by more than one, but unfortunately it's level at half time. And the reason for that is a thunderous effort. Another long shot flying in at the lower levels. We're back five minutes into the first half as Kelly's got the ball on the left for us, looking for scars on the overlap. We just need to get balls into the box here, then we've gone for another switch of play. Meikle's got it down to the right back Stora. Got plenty of time to cross if he can. He goes across the box to Kelly, into O'Connor on the edge. Shot's blocked, but it's back to Kelly again. He's been challenged really quickly. Out to scars, it's good pressing from Gloucester, but we've got it back into Kennedy. And now there's a man over on the right-hand side, Stora keeping possession. The highlight ends, so he can't have done anything good with it. And we've almost an hour gone. It's still 1-1 here at Gloucester. It's a throw on the left-hand side for the home side, though. It's out to Parker, the centre forward. Delivers for Tomlinson. Williams hacks away. Hanks again on the half volley. And if he'd scored another one, I would have had a strop. But fortunately, it goes over the bar. Eden with a goal kick for us long downfield. He's looking for O'Connor up there. Knocks it down for Nimely really well, actually. And it's out to Meikle, the right winger. Can he find the delivery? He can't. He goes back to Stora for some reason. Had space to run into there. Not sure why he didn't but he's picked up the ball again here back to Stora the right back into Kennedy in midfield we've just got to put the ball in the box we look absolutely petrified of it and I'm not sure why as it finally comes in Thomas heads away to Pew and we've got a chance to find Nimely on the edge of the box though his shot's blocked by the defender Tomlinson brings it away the highlight ends and it's still 1-1 and almost time for us to think about substitutions just 20 left so we're gonna do just that and hopefully we can find one or two game changers so this is where we're supposed to earn our big bucks in this series. We don't have any saying transfer staffing or contract, but of course we are in charge of our tactical setup. And with O'Connor playing well today, I don't want to change shape for once. It doesn't feel like a midfield three will benefit us anyway, as they're playing with that narrow diamond, of course. What we are going to do is take out the inexperienced Tom Pugh. We've replaced him with Michael Richens, a player who's naturally a ball winner anyway. So he's going to stay in that defensive duty. He might even go on to support actually, try and win it high up up the pitch. But I think we might stick with defensive for now. And then Kennedy will be a central midfielder on defend. Just give us a little bit more stability in the middle. And we'll get back into it with two changes remaining. Or well, 10 to go. It's a very quiet game. Storer at right back's knackered though. So I'm going to have to bring Vidal on for the last few. And I just hope he doesn't do anything silly. We've got one more change if we need to waste time. And with three to go, we might as well make it. Kelly's knackered on the left wing, but I haven't got a replacement. Meikle's knackered on the right, but playing well. I just don't know which player to take off here. So in fact, I'm just going to leave it. We haven't got a better player on the bench. So let's just leave it for now. We're into stoppage time. So now we will make the change. And it'll just be a straight swap up front. Nim replaced by NT as we just tried to see off the last few seconds. A point would be a good result as we mentioned. I know we have been the better side in this game. But when we get to this point, we're petrified of conceding late goals. It's already happened in one or two matches. So I just want to make sure that we get the point and hopefully edge our way up the table. Joe Hanks booked for the home side and the final whistle should go any second. Vidal with a throw on the right to Richens. We played a minute more than the allotted three. He switches it to the centre half Williams and the final whistle does go. Not the best result, but a really good performance. You can start to see the side playing in our mould. And a wonderful strike is the only thing that denied us. Unfortunately, the long shots killing us again. But certainly promising signs again despite our best striker being missing. And I'm going to say unlucky to the lads despite Norman's disagreement. He wants us to say we're disappointing. Yes, the result wasn't the best, but the lads perform really well and we need to keep the morale nice and high. We've got a nice break after this one by the looks of things, unless it's an FA Trophy tie or something. So a chance for us to perhaps work with the side a bit more and try and improve a few things tactically. We've got Lemington and Brackley the bottom two. Brackley managed to pick up a point today, so the six-point gap remains to the bottom two that we've now edged up to 14th place. 
five sides on 20 points, including us and Gloucester, and it's going to be a very tight scrap down there, which is going to make it a very interesting season. Let's go and see what the media said about the game. Honours even at the Jubilee Stadium. The possession was level and we had slightly more shots, but again, unfortunately, it's those long-range efforts getting us. We know that it's a problem in the game at the moment, so hopefully it'll resolve itself soon. By the time this episode's out, it probably has been fixed, but I'm recording this at least a week in advance, and as a result, this is still on the beta version. So things going pretty decently after a rocky start in our first five games and everything staying pretty stable dynamically. So I'm just hoping we can get one or two players in really to bolster the squad. But we haven't got any wage budget remaining. So I think this is pretty much it for the season. We're making money, which is a good thing. The finances are really stable. And with us out the FA Cup, we're not going to have any big windfalls. So unfortunately, we're probably sticking with this team. We've got a couple of problems, as we mentioned, such as the one at right back. We're also not the strongest in central midfield. But overall, we've got a good enough squad to compete, and I think we should be able to stay up comfortably, barring any more injury disasters. So we're going to leave it a few games before we pop back. I'm trying to find a game against the team in and around us, or one against a big side that might be nice to see, and I think I've found the one I want. So we're going to come back in about a month and a half. Hereford on the 18th of January. We've got eight scheduled league games between now and then, including four tricky away games in December. Of course, the FA Trophy run could change that, and if we get a National League side, we'll come back before. But Hereford aside, obviously working their way back up, and another side in and around us in the league. But if you did enjoy this episode and that good performance away from home, please do put a thumbs up on the video. Let me know what you thought of the tactic and the way we played in that game. I think we looked like a good mid-table side. Unfortunately, just lacked that killer instinct. Without Reese Kavanagh, we've dried up up the goal slightly but we're still able to pick up enough results and I think a point's a decent one in that one. I do think we've got the capability to survive comfortably that we're only two or three injuries away from a crisis but fingers crossed we won't have to experience that and we'll be able to succeed in our first job. Subscribe to the channel for daily FM20 content for my two long-term stories. Our Dorking Wanderer save will be back tomorrow for another episode and then this one again in two days time and they'll keep rotating every day until Christmas where we'll have another fun mini-series. We've also just finished our beta save with Luton Town so please do check that one out if you missed it but a massive thanks for watching this one and your continued support of the series. I really do appreciate it and I hope to see you next time for another important episode as we try to keep ourselves away from the danger zone. Thank you.